So you've just completed a lab. What you need to do now is look at the data that you collected and the observations that you made while conducting the lab. And then with that information, you need to share what you did and what you learned. So you're going to learn how to do a lab conclusion today. So why do we write conclusions? You need to explain what happened in your lab. A lab conclusion is a summary of what happened, and also you describe if you met your purpose and if you supported or maybe refuted your hypothesis. A lab conclusion is based on your experimental data and observations, and it's also an error analysis because not all labs go perfectly. It's very hard to have a controlled lab without any errors or potential errors. And a conclusion suggests further experimentation and applications of your findings. So you might be able to come up with a, the next step or a next lab to do. And you can also, what's really important to do is relate what you learned in the lab to what you've been learning and studying in class. So our lab conclusions include three main parts. So they're going to be made up of three paragraphs for one lab conclusion. And we call these paragraphs RE, P, and PA. RE stands for Results with Evidence and Explanation. The R is for the results. You want to give the answer to the questions in your purpose. So hopefully you are able to figure some things out. So you're going to explain your results. Explain how the goals or purpose of your lab were or maybe were not achieved. The E stands for explanation, which is also called a claim. You're going to explain what the data shows. Do the data that you collected support or not support, which is also called refute, your hypothesis? The second E stands for evidence. Here, you're going to support your claim. You're going to support your explanation of the concept with the data that you collected from the experiment. This paragraph, the re-paragraph, that includes results, explanation, and evidence, should be a six to eight sentence paragraph. The P, the second paragraph of your conclusion, is for possible errors. Here, you're going to explain experimental design errors that might lead to false data. Now, what could be wrong? Think about all the things that could have gone wrong with how you set up your experiment or how you conducted the experiment. Think about your variables. Did you only change one variable at a time and keep the rest constant? Did you use your equipment correctly? Did you use the right equipment? Did you use the right measurements? When you're talking about what might have gone wrong, don't say human error because obviously human error could occur with any lab that you've done. But think about specifically the setup of the lab. Did you have your procedures correct? Were you missing a step? Um, did you include everything that needed to be done as you were going through the lab? The second part of the possible errors is recommendations on how to improve the experiment to minimize the error. So what would you do differently next time? Maybe you determined that you changed too many variables, so you might test things a little bit differently the next time. The P, the possible error paragraph, should be five to six sentences. And the last paragraph is PA, practical applications. Here, you're going to connect what you learned in the lab to periodicals, readings, other labs, lecture notes, or other research that you've done. And you want to cite all evidence in APA format. In your English classes or history classes, you might use um, MLA, but here in science, we always use APA. Now, in this conclusion paragraph, you also want to explain how another experiment might help answer questions raised by your current experiment. Maybe as you did something, you have further questions. So what else could you do in a future experiment? Then think about how does this information that you learn in the lab apply to life outside of the classroom. Why is it important for you to know this information? Why are we learning this in biology class? And how might it apply to you, to your life, to your family, to your friends, to the environment, etc. And then lastly, 
at the end of your conclusion, the last sentence or two of the practical application paragraph, you're going to provide a concluding statement that summarizes the lab and clarifies the relationship among the concepts. So you're going to, just in one or two sentences, summarize what you learned and summarize the concepts that you are studying. The practical applications paragraph of your conclusion should be five to six sentences. Now, your next steps of what you're going to do to begin your conclusion. You're going to work with your lab partners right now, and you're going to answer the post-lab conclusion questions. You can find these questions on the Schoology website for today. After you've discussed and answered the questions, on your own, you're going to use those answers to write a three-paragraph conclusion, the re pa After you've written your conclusion, you're going to have someone peer edit it. I'll give you more instructions about peer editing soon. After the peer editing is done, you're going to revise your entire lab as well as your conclusion, and you're going to complete your final draft of your lab report. The due date of your lab report can be found on the class website, in the Google Calendar, as well as on Schoology. So go ahead and get to work answering your post-lab conclusion questions right now with your lab partners.